Welcome to Conflict News 24. Uh, some updates for you on the ongoing conflicts. First one is in East Congo. Second one is uh, the war which started between Russia and Ukraine in February this year. Firstly, East Congo where Rwandan president today accused uh, Congo and other players of putting blames for whatever is happening in Congo on Rwanda's shoulders. Secondly, a protest was held in Goma, not allowed by the government, but people protested, chanted slogans against Rwanda and uh, Uganda and backed the deployment of Kenyan troops. Uh, thirdly, uh, Kenyatta spoke a few hours ago after his meetings with uh, armed groups uh, uh, from Congo. The meeting is being held in Nairobi, Kenya, where East Africa community leaders and uh, Kenyatta, Burundi's president, are trying to resolve the crisis uh, through dialogue. And uh, fourthly, fighting is being reported uh, in uh, Kishishe once again, close to Kishishe between M23 fighters and FDLR. Uh, secondly, Russia-Ukraine conflict, visual confirmation that Russians have, have broken through Ukrainian defense lines to the south of Bakhmod. Pictures, videos of Russian soldiers are being shared from the Yanivka, Kurdyumivka and Zelino Polye. Switzerland has uh, frozen $8 billion uh, of Russian assets. Uh, firstly, viewers, uh, East Congo a conflict uh, where... Uh, more than 100 armed groups are operating. Diplomatic efforts are underway. Talks are being held in Nairobi, Kenya. Rwanda and Uganda are accused of backing M23 fighters against Congolese military. Rwandan President uh, Paul Kagame spoke a few hours ago. He said that Rwanda was an easy target for everyone. Whatever is happening in Congo is being blamed on Rwanda, though internal problems of Congo should be resolved by Congolese government. He said Rwanda knows the price of war uh, and if uh, anyone uh, wants to learn what war is, what are the consequences of war, they should uh, contact. Uh, Paul Kagame, Rwandan uh, president. Maybe he was referring to what happened between uh, Hutus and Tutsis uh, around uh, more than two decades ago when tens of thousands were massacred in ethnic violence in Rwanda. Congolese government is of this uh, view that Rwanda is actively backing M23 Tutsi fighters. Rwanda says that uh, FDLR, Hutu, Rwandan opposition fighters are being organized on Congolese soil against Rwandan government. Take a listen to what Paul Kagame said a few hours ago. If you are looking for somebody who knows a thing about war, you come to me, please. I know something about it, and I know how bad it is. And by that, I know how you cannot have anything better than peace. It has become so convenient for long that all problems are put on the shoulders, heavily on the shoulders of Rwanda. Rwanda is always the culprit in all this. It's not FDR, it's not the government of Congo that should be responsible for its problems and people. It's not the UN. It's not the powerful countries. In comparison, Rwanda and Congo, there is more, much more, much, much more. Congo offers these people than Rwanda. So naturally, these people must uh, tread carefully when they are dealing with Congo's problems. They must even assist Congo to alleviate their, their pain by transferring the, the blame they should have put somewhere else. And uh, the easiest place to put their blame is Rwanda. Secondly, was youth protested a few hours ago in Goma city, capital of North Kivu. M23 fighters are trying to advance towards Goma. They're around 15 kilometers away from Goma, but ceasefire holding, largely holding. 
people protesting in Goma, East Africa community, country forces arriving in Goma. Kenyan troops have arrived, Uganda has announced to send troops, but so far Ugandan troops have not arrived in Goma. People protested uh, against uh, deployment of Ugandan troops in Goma, in East Congo. Uh, youth uh, chanted slogans against Rwanda and Uganda in today's demonstration. Demonstration was not allowed. Uh, local authorities uh, tried to disperse the protesters. Uh, protesters, youth uh, backed the deployment of Kenyan troops in East Congo. Uh, Kenyan troops are already deployed in, in, in Goma. They have arrived in Goma. Around, uh, around 900 were due to arrive in Goma and several hundred have arrived in Goma. Ugandan troops have not arrived in Goma so far. Uh, so, locals are opposing uh, deployment of Ugandan troops in East Congo. Both Uganda and Rwanda are seen as supporters of M23 fighters uh, in East Congo. Watch a clip from today's protest held in Goma city. <laughs> A third liberal was Huru Kenyatta, East Africa community facilitator to resolve East Congo conflict, has held some meetings in Nairobi, Kenya with uh, uh, armed group representatives and civil society uh, members from East Congo. After these meetings, he said that uh, he was ready to talk to M23, but M23 must implement the provisions of uh, Loanda Mini Summit. In Loanda, Angola, almost a week ago, East African community leaders held a meeting and there a joint declaration was issued uh, which uh, called for withdrawal of M23 from newly captured areas, uh, disarming of all armed groups and implementation of ceasefire. Ceasefire uh, came into force on uh, Friday, uh, but no withdrawal, no disarming. Uh, so, can there be a meeting between Kenyatta and M23? While Kenyatta says that Luanda uh, summit declaration should be implemented and M23 does not want to disarm and does not want to withdraw. So, is there a stalemate? Seems to be a stalemate. How will Kenyatta find a way out of this stalemate. No M23 FDLR or uh, ADF uh, representatives are in uh, Nairobi where talks are underway. A fourth viewers a fighting resume today in and near Kishishe. Kishishe is in Bambo viewers and we know that uh, uh, M23 fighters lost Kashishe more than a week ago. Then two days ago, they recaptured Kashishe. And now FDLR and Mama Nyotra are trying to retake Kashishe. There was fighting uh, near uh, Kashishe in a village called uh, Lishabre, three kilometers away from Kirima, 18 kilometers away from Kibirizi. There was heavy fighting between M23 and FDLR supported by uh, my, my Nyotra was there, FDLR too, it's not clear, but uh, uh, was there FARDC too, Congolese military. Uh, some say FARDC and FDR, FDLR jointly launched an offensive on Kashisha, but not confirmed. Uh, Kashisha is reportedly still under M23 fighters. So, a ceasefire largely holding, but on this front, we have seen the second clash between uh, M23 and uh, FDLR after the announcement of ceasefire last uh, Friday. Uh, secondly, was Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, two days ago, we reported that uh, Russian forces had broken through Ukrainian defense lines to the south of Bakhmut city. Now, visual confirmation pictures and videos are being shared by Russian military from Ozyanevka, Kurdyomevka, and Zelino Polye. Both are uh, three are situated to the south of Bakhmut. So, Bakhmut 
Horlivka line has been breached by Russian military, visually confirmed, though we were two days ago. Now, visually confirmed that uh, Russian and Allied forces have managed to breach this line. And they are in Ozayanivka, Kurdiomivka, and Zelino, Opolia. First front where Russians have made some gains, uh, territorial gains, in the last few months. So the land has uh, frozen $8 billion of Russian assets. When this war started, we saw that EU, US, they uh, took some joint measures. They imposed sanctions on Russian entities and they froze Russian assets in European US banks. And we have seen that billions of uh, dollars of uh, Russia have been frozen. So it, it means that uh, the war is not just between Ukraine and Russia. And war will not come to an end through just Russia-Ukraine dialogue entire Europe involved, US involved. So for resolution to this conflict, you need a comprehensive approach involving players from EU, from US, Russia, Ukraine, and some other neutral parties too, largely neutral, though it's hard to find neutral parties in this conflict. But some countries can play a role, especially Turkey and others. Uh, but solution cannot be just between Russia and Ukraine. We'll have to find a comprehensive solution involving all stakeholders. But question is, do all stakeholders want peace? Do they have their own interests which are uh, linked with continuation of this war? Thank you for watching.